I'm not sure how much rain we've had, but we've got puddles on the yard. It wasn't supposed to rain last night. That's why we worked some ground yesterday. Um, just in the rain. It's supposed to be a really dry day as well. Hopefully I'll be able to get spray. No, it won't be um, too wet for doing that. All spreading on, bale of hay on. Charlotte's off swimming with James as well. Go we swimming. Yeah, look filled about that, don't you? Just on the roof. Uh, someone was shooting pigeons with an air rifle over the weekend. They thought one had fell in this valley gutter, but I've gone the full length of it. There's nothing there. But while I'm here, I'm just going to sweep out that end. There's a bit of debris. Hopefully today the solar panels should do okay. They're still relatively clean, to be honest, after they were clean the other week. So it's a few months ago. Yeah, it's a bit, a bit sludgy here. And what happens is that sets in the sun bakes like a piece of pizza and blow, falls over and blocks the downspouts. So I'll sweep it out now. I've no idea how this rubber tube got up here. It must have been a bird. It's quite big though, isn't it? You just know that most of this is bird poop. It's horrible. Ah, I've just dropped my glove in it as well. Ugh. Oh, see that OSR over there now? Just showing signs of flowering. I'm just gonna go to the nursery because they're faultless broken and load a wagon for him. Up the road, Andrew is just shot down there somewhere. There he is. He's uh, putting the cladding on with Rob. Some of the ground at Rain Hill that we spread the muck on and it can get a bit tight. We decided that we'll use the cladding on that uh, rather than the horse. I think the horse is capable of doing everything, but I just don't want to drill 150, 200 acres of beans with it all. Find the beans don't do as well as it should do when I don't know whether it'll be the weather or the drill so we're going to just carry on trialing both methods for a couple of years until we decide that the course can definitely drill beans I mean it's certainly puts them in the ground accurately but whether it's as good on tight soil like the clay soils without the leg underneath I don't know so we're, we're going to do half the half of one field and try it and then we're going to do the you know like I say just ease it in and see because like I say I don't don't want to yield disaster not know why it was Equally, it could out yield the bit done with the horse compared to the cladon, but we have used the cladon for about eight or nine years and we've always had decent crops of beans. Last year, there wasn't a lot to tell at all. If anything, the horse may have done slightly better, but it did depend on the soil type and some of the ground that we horsed, we sumoed in front of as well. Bit of a beast of a Scania. Witcher in Shropshire. That's half off now, go around the other side. Side. I could probably do it all from this side, but there's not really anywhere to stack it. Right, so I may as well just unload it from this side. Keep the weight low. Just having a quick inspection of the new gateway. Nicely going off now, the concrete. We've just got to now take this shutter out here then tarmac that little bit because we couldn't concrete to here because the concrete had been too thin so you see the old line there the old white line underneath it's where our ride the road used to be and this is it now so we'll rake out this rubbishy bit here where it's just soil get a nice edge maybe trim it with the saw and then tarmac in and hopefully that should be all right we've got the drill now on the 936 but the gps receiver's not working so I've rung up George from RTK Network and after 40 minutes of trying loads of different things, I don't know how he's got enough patience. But anyway, we've we've narrowed it down to so we think the modem has gone inside this top con unit. So we're just going to unscrew it now, see what it looks like and see if we can find someone local with one that we can borrow to try it. So we're just going to take the lid off here. Can't get the modem working, so Rob's just nipped off to the local Fent dealer, Clark and Pullman, because they've got an old one, but they don't know why it's in the box. It might be broken anyway, but we're going to try it just to see. We're going to open up the yard. A new concrete. Will it crack? Oh, no. There we go. The yard is now officially open. Andrew's just been swapping these boots on the back of the clay drill to from the twin outlet which is them ones to the single outlet which is them ready for drilling beans but 
like I say, we've had a bit of a problem with the RTK radio in this tractor. So that other radio that we picked up also doesn't work. So that's modem, sorry. So anyway, Andrew's given up now. He's getting that drill out. We're going to go drill him some of that. And um, we'll go with this without the GPS. And we're going to do the trial work with it. Right, Michelle and Izzy are here from AHDB. Anyway, I'm making them a brew. So someone tell me what I'm doing wrong. I've put the tea bags in and then now I'm adding the milk. <laughs> and then I can get it to the right colour then. But apparently that's the wrong way of doing it. What's the correct way? Right, I've made that one now. So I'm going to stir this one and squash the tea bag a little bit until it gets to the right colour. And then lift the tea bag out. And there you go. A cup of tea. Perfect. I'll be right. Um, Andrew's gone with one drill. We're going to go with this one now. Just going to check the tyre presses on the little wheels. We've also got some new top links if we need to change the depth because the, some of the top links are a little bit seized. These, the ones on the wheels that look like that. In fact, I'll show you better now. Remember, we ordered some off Cramp the other day because by the time you messed around fixing them, you could buy them off Cramp for less than <laughs> the time it took to fix them. We're just folding that up ready to go. I should fit down the road now. We've just got to calibrate it as well. Rob's put the seed in, but it's not calibrated. Put up the night of lighter because it's now five o'clock. I'm leaving the yard for the first time all day with the sprayer because I've just been harassed all day. One drill is ready to go now and the other one got to the field about an hour ago. So much for drilling beans all day. The rain this morning really messes up and then obviously swapping drills didn't help. Can't see for the sun, but Andrew is there drilling that field he's already drilled this one so it had a little bit of surface compaction because we'd spread muck on it and then the cover crop sorry this didn't have a cover crop so we weren't sure but it was a bit tight in the top so andrew lightly dissed it yesterday that was to make sure we got a good seed bed so that the pigeons won't root it out but also as well it also helped it dry out a bit because it was a little bit sticky on the top. Then it rained last night and made it so it was too wet to do anything this morning. Anyway, he's coming now, he's drilled this. It looks, it looks bang on. I just hope it's not got any compaction lower down. That was one of the reasons why we were gonna try and use a Claydon drill, but we'll trial them against each other anyway. So he's just started on this one now. He's, he's in that bottom corner. We've just come in down the road there. But the bottom, this, this is nice soil, nice black sandy soil. But the bottom's quite heavy clay and it was a bit sticky yesterday. So that drill's gonna be better. So we're gonna drill that with, hello Ivan. We're gonna drill that with the claim at the bottom. And then we'll do some passes with this drill to see on the yield meter of the combine, which is the best. That looks mega. Eighteen meters if you have the two together. Just calibrating it now with the horse kit. Uh, got the sprayer on and I'd take the tank, don't want that setting in the tank, what I'm going to spray in a minute. But we had that blocking the airflow, so don't know whether it's going to be all right when we fold it out now. But, oh yeah, no wonder that fan's not blowing hard enough. It's got moisture in there and wheat. Do you want that screwdriver to flick it out? That's the problem. Oh. The rob's happened to guess the line. This is where Andrew stopped, this is where he's going now. We're just trying to pull it on the moss up. Oh. Maybe it's gone a bit deep this side track. But yeah, the GPS isn't working so he doesn't know his line, but I'm gonna do a 36 metre pass in this field with it but we've just spent ages messing around wondering why the fan wasn't blowing very hard so we found that hedgehog in it andrew's nearly finished the rest of the field in the time we've been messing like a 24 acre field and he's nearly done so that's out you can see going that way but this way you can really see the line remember clarkson where he had to drive with the rollers well that's kind of what we nearly need to do here but that's the advantage of GPS. It has got markers, that drill. But but one of the fittings is leaking oil quite bad. And because we never use them, because we just rely on GPS, we've never changed it. So um, anyway, we'll just patch, we'll do this. 
it's Frippy and patch up that headland. Actually, just looking, Andrew's done every other one. So he's done a pass here, missed a pass, done a pass, missed a pass. So that he's just turning every 24 metres with the 12. And then once he gets to that far corner, he'll then loop all the way in between. And then we'll end, he'll end up finished in the right place. And he's not screwing round at the end, turning really tight. I don't think he's doing a bad job there. He probably just wants to come this way a couple of inches. Pairing away, we need to get that tape off the bonnet. I bet you that's using a lot more fuel than that one, and that's twice the width. That's how bad it is to see the mark. Rob's turned around, you can obviously see this divot there from the end coulter boiling, and he's actually set into the wrong, the wrong bit. Gonna check. I think it might be going a bit deep this side. Yeah, probably is. Um, see if the tire is a bit soft. Yeah, that's uh, that's leaking. Do you know what? I might just be able to tighten that. Actually, I don't think it is snapped. That's right, Andy. I've tightened it up. It doesn't seem to be dripping much at all now. Right, try that now then. How much fuel? Better. I don't know why that's leaving that mark there. Anyway, see how it's got the marker on working. You can see better that way. So he's got something to follow now when he comes back up. There we go. Andrew's nearly finished now. He's only going to go up and down twice. And then Rob has got another three passes now. We've set it up. Then we've just got this field over the heads to do next. I'm going to now go over the railway. Spray some wheat. So this is the, uh, I think it's the DSG Champion. Looks amazing, but we are going to put a growth reg on it so it doesn't grow too much. Anyway, while I have been waiting to cross the railway line, which was eight minutes, uh, I've done the Burpee Bombers. We've got Beth Ferguson's two, Edwin Miller's on there, Big G, the Farrier's 54, James Grantham's on there, Paul Crabb, John Wilkinson, 85, massive. Uh, Craig Wright, missed him yesterday. I actually said his wife's name by mistake. Big G is 50. Kerry Foster's on there. Philip Baxter 7 and George LePage. Happy birthday everyone. 30,226. Normally a bit of water lies on this field, just here. But because the wheat's been so well established, even though it has, it's still kept growing, which is nice. Rabbits have grazed a little bit here, as well as where I just showed you then. Um, they obviously can only eat the bit in the tram line that's short. The other bit must be a bit too tall from, for them. It looks mega though. That's Andy, got permission straight away, so we'll get back across now. Andrew's just finishing off now. He's got his lights on, but the GPS will help. It actually sees darker than it looks on the camera. Rob's also finished as well. So Rob's done the bottom headland of this field here and the bottom headland of that field because they were quite wet and sticky and needed a little bit of leveling. We set both tractors at 7K. Rob was using 20 litres of fuel at 7K at six metres and Andrew was using 26 litres at 12 metres, so nearly half the fuel, really. Um, if we'd have wound them up to 10 or 11k, I think it'd have been even more. Like, it, the, the, the horse should have used even less, I think, per metre than the Claydon, perhaps, because the Claydon's obviously got that leading tyre that goes a bit deeper. Rob's off, and Rich is here now with some seed and the Merlot to top up Andrew, because he's run out of seed. Just putting seed in the drill, it is. Adam back with his Zerion. He's been wood chipping here, Tom Pemberton. Sam behind him with the trailer on. They're just filling up now behind me. Anyway, that is all for today. Sorry it's a late video, but that's what happens when the, light, the nights are lighter. We end up working till later. And I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've made it this far, give it a thumbs up. And um, not a thumbs up, it's just a like button, isn't it? And I'll see you all tomorrow. Actually, one last thing, we've not done it for ages. How are you feeling today? Answer as a percent. 
I'm 85% today. I'd have been 95 if things had gone a bit more according to plan. But we've got on some good field work and I've seen some good crops. So how are you feeling? Answer us a percent. Leave it in the comments. That's what the hashtag means on every title.